Okay, I think we're recording. So, um, hello and welcome. So, this um, I'm Marie Porter, and I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, and I help people um, get past issues that are holding them back. And um, just a few months ago, I saw lovely Cheryl here, and she came to see me. She's a, a mum of three, runs her own business, and um, she felt something was holding her back, so she took the leap and decided to get in touch with me. Um, so I just want to go into detail to sort of see what, what Cheryl was uh, experiencing and how therapy and particularly RTT therapy helped her. So, hi Cheryl. Hello. Um, can you can you let us know what what was it that made you decide to book in with me? At the, at the time, I think it was desperate. I was quite desperate, really. I'd exhausted all other avenues of um, when I say therapy or treatment. Um, I just got to a point where I just had to try something new. I tried CBT. Um, you know, normal, when I say normal therapy, traditional therapies, let's say, a number of times with different people over a number of years. Um, I tried CBD, I tried all sorts of things to try and sort of feel more engaged with life, really, and it wasn't happening for me, so that's why I ended up, you know. Okay. And what, how, how would you describe what you were experiencing? It was, uh, there was a, there was a lot of numbness actually I realize now when I look back I didn't really feel for anything um, but when I did feel something it was usually anxiety or depression and it was crippling and I didn't want to tell anybody about it and this is actually the first time that I'm actually putting it out there because most people wouldn't know that about me um, maybe you wouldn't even assume it about me because I became you know a master of disguise as you do with with um, anxiety and depression you hide it Okay, so you'd been hiding it for a while. Yeah, I was quite, I felt quite ashamed that it had been going on for so long and that I couldn't just deal with it myself. So I was giving myself quite a lot of, you know, negative talk really that, you know, I should be managing better. Yeah. You know. That was, that was the word I remember you saying when we first spoke, you said managing, you were having to manage yourself. I was using all my energy just to manage myself throughout a day so I was exhausted and didn't really have much energy for anything else yeah um I used to book all my appointments in the afternoon of the evening because it used to take me half a day to just get myself together yeah. mentally and physically so you would cope you'd found a way to cope around that yeah it was bloody awful quite honestly when I look back on it now it was just um hell on earth quite honestly I just got used to it yeah so what was happening in your life at the time that you decided to book in? Um, I had been looking at RTT for probably a couple of years. Um, I'd seen something on uh, the internet uh, with Marissa, Marissa Peer, and I actually downloaded one of her free sessions through Mind Valley at the time. And I found it really, really interesting what she was doing, and it was sort of been on my radar for a couple of years before I actually came across you. But I, I thought it was all in America. I thought, you know, it's an American thing that it wouldn't be done over here. But I was always interested in it, so yeah, that's how I ended up with you. But um, I say ended up with you. I don't mean that to sound like it did, but you know, um, I think uh, I was looking. I didn't realise that there's anybody so close, and it was a huge relief to find you. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Um, so can you sort of explain in detail um, how how did it feel? What was it like when you had this? And you've touched on it a bit, but just to let people know how it was for you, what was, what was life like with this? And how long had it been like that for? Well, if I'm completely honest, so I've probably suffered from depression for a good 20 25 years actually maybe I think it came from postnatal depression originally it, it, I think it, that sort of was a, it was a catalyst and um, for 10 years I was on antidepressants and 
I struggled to come off them for a really long time. And then when I did, I felt that was such a huge achievement at the time, although it was hell on earth to go through. Um, but from that moment onwards, whenever I, when the depression started to creep in, I didn't want to seek, um, you know, medical advice about it necessarily because I didn't want to take the tablets again. Um, but the anxiety itself was crippling. It affected my work. It affected my relationships. Um, in fact, I preferred people to think I was a bit weird rather than tell them I was actually struggling with um, anxiety in particular. Yeah, uh, I'd rather they just thought I was a bit odd. What was it about that that you didn't want to share with them? Um, I think it's because I had, I was always seen as a strong person who could cope with everything. Um, I mean, I, you know, I had three children, three young children, and I, I raised them for 17 years on my own. Those, those were tough times anyway. Um, I was running a business at the same time, or trying to. Uh, we had no money. Um, you know, things were quite tough back then. Um, but I got, I, I became sort of uh, looked upon, I suppose, as someone who could cope, someone who was strong and could get through anything. So because people were so used to seeing me that way, I felt I could not, I just couldn't share this vulnerable side of me. And I'll be honest with you, Marie, I was sick of the anxiety and depression. I thought people are just going to get bored because um, I was bored with it as well as, yeah. you know. So. And you'd tried other things and they hadn't resolved it? Oh, I tried everything. Honestly, that was one of the reasons I didn't want to go to the doctors because I thought they're either going to say to me, right, it's CBT, I've done that, tick. You know, I've done therapy a number of times, tick. I've done specialised bespoke therapy, tick. You know, I've taken uh, herbal supplements, tick. Yeah. I've done mindfulness, all of these things. That I kept trying, so I was always trying to make an effort. Yeah, to, um, and those things can it. have a, a good effect for some people, but not always. And that was what you experienced. Yeah, and I, I, I couldn't really get to the bottom of, of why I felt so bad every day because, you know, I, I do have a really, you know, lovely life. Really, I've got you know three lovely kids. Uh, my house is okay. My job I absolutely love. There's no. I kept thinking to myself. There's no reason I should feel like this. Why is every day such an effort, you know? Yeah. And obviously you tried all those things and they didn't bring you what you wanted, which was the relief from that. No. Why do you think they didn't work? Because they didn't get to that root, that bottom of it. You know, I think for me, number one, I didn't know why I felt the way that I did. And I didn't find it helpful going to therapy week after week and going over the same upsetting stuff that was obvious in my life, if you know what I mean, that, that could have been the reason. But it didn't necessarily mean it was the reason. I wasn't looking for a hook to hang the blame on anything. I just wanted to feel better, you know. Yeah. But um, it was almost like the root cause was, was my family situation back then. But actually, there was a lot more to it than that. Yeah, and it didn't bring didn't bring the relief. No, it didn't. And so I, you know, on days I wasn't coping, I would hide under my duvet, sometimes for days, you know, if not weeks, if it was a particularly stressful time. And um, I had money troubles back then as well, which were not helped at all by the, you know, the, the frame of mind I found myself in. Yeah. I just, you know, that's how it was. When when I had an episode, that's how it was. But I pretty much spent, you know, a number of years just coping. Yeah, yeah. And so what were your thoughts then? You've tried all those different therapies and you've heard of hypnotherapy back then, but what what were your thoughts about hypnotherapy? Um, I wasn't actually phased by the hypnotherapy part, although I know some people are, particularly if they've watched, you know, some entertainment show, you know, on the TV and they've got people doing, you know, funny things and that sort of thing as if they're out of control. But I have had hypnotherapy before a number of years ago. It's about smoking. And 
you know, it's almost like I, rem I remember sort of being aware of everything and in control of everything, but also that there was guidance in there. You know, I, I, there was free will involved. So yeah. if, if I was told something that I didn't agree with, you know, that would register with me. Yeah. And so now after your session, um, mm -hmm. what, how, how did you find the whole experience? Well, I, I, I'm trying to find the right words because it's just been absolutely life changing. Because it was h how many sessions? One, one session. You know, I've been going to these, when, you know, when I was going to, in therapy, I was having session after session after session, desperate to find a solution or a, a, some, you know, some easing of the pain that would seem to be so constant. But with the RTT, um, I mean, we spoke for, you know, a good hour sort of as an initial phone call because I, yeah. I wasn't sure really where to start. And yeah. you were so patient and kind with me at that point. And I sort of, it, it felt quite exciting as well to be speaking to you about the RTT because I knew something about it before. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was thrilled to have, you know, an RTT practitioner so close. So, um, yeah, it was... Uh, the experience itself was really relaxing. Um, I actually don't remember a whole load. I, I remember parts of it, but I don't remember the whole thing. I think the session was probably two hours long, or maybe yeah, around bit, that. Just a bit over, I think. But yeah, yeah, it didn't feel like two hours. No, it goes and quick, doesn't it? It really, really does, and the uh recording that you sent me afterwards initially i thought the recording was going to be of the session but then you prepared a, a bespoke one didn't you specifically yeah. for me yeah i had to listen to well, i didn't have to listen to it but you know if i wanted to get what well, it was part of the process yeah. was to listen to it you know at least once a day or once a day every day um yeah. It, it was it was a game changer for me. I can't believe. I, I feel like there's almost a magic with it. I know I know there's a science to it as well, but for me, as someone who's not you know a therapist or anything like that, I, the the effect on my life has just been absolutely magical. You know, yeah. it feels like a miracle. And um, you were you were just saying about. Um about the brain and everything and what it does is it helps to rewire you know it is like magic but it's doing yeah. that in a scientific proven, proven way where it's helping to rewire and that discipline of choosing to listen to something it's, it's helping to drive that in the direction that we'd already discussed we you know we'd already gathered all that information of how you want to be after yeah and, and, and it's helping to steer you in that way. So in the session, it's all about steering things. And then after, you, you're steering yourself, and choosing how you want to be. And that, that's all the, the wiring that goes on. I didn't even realise, you know, all, all that was happening. But um, uh, it's been sort of a, just over four months now, something like that. And we're going through the coronavirus times. You know, and something like this would normally have taken the legs from under me and I could have ended up again hiding under my duvet for, for days at a time or something like that. But I just feel so engaged with life now. Um, everything, I, I feel so joyful about everything. It's really weird. I'm still getting used to this feeling because the opposite was true. You know, only six months ago, I was still really, really struggling. And I'm thinking... God, if this is the way my life is going to be, it's so much, why is life so much effort? Why is it so hard? I don't get it, you yeah. know? Um, but since then, I just can't stop smiling, to be honest with you, because it feels like a huge relief I, I've been waiting for for so long. And I still, even now, can't believe, for me anyway, it was one session. Yeah. I, honestly, I honestly thought, you know, it, it would be like other I was I was expecting it to be a bit like other therapies that I'd have to do a few of them or buy a block booking or something like that and when yeah. you said no we just do one session and if you feel like you need another then you'll get in touch with me and you'll let me know and yeah. I thought wow one session really 
it, it yeah. really sounds extreme because on one hand you know there's the years before where i was literally struggling with everything because the anxiety was in the background just sapping all my energy and then literally within well you know the session and and, and now all these all this time later it's just like wow i feel just like a completely different and person. what was it like immediately after in the first few days after in the first few days um there was some relief some very some initial relief straight away and that took some adjusting to to be honest with you because i'm used to my body feeling anxiety all the time feeling yeah. fear every day so after the session um i thought that I, I i felt strange but i couldn't work out it wasn't a bad strange it was like oh my god this is what life feels like without anxiety without that knot in my stomach of you know almost and like, saying, I'm, you, i know you said something like you you almost kind of are looking for where it might be yeah and it's uh right so i feel fine okay this is a bit different um it felt a bit strange not horrible just i was so used to feeling like crap yeah. every day quite honestly yeah. Yeah. and i remember the first morning afterwards i woke up i didn't feel anxious and i thought oh it'll be a short-term thing maybe you know or it's only the first day and that's why when we before we were having this conversation i didn't want to do any kind of testimonial immediately afterwards i wanted to be able to say hand on heart you know that months later it's just getting better and better really quite honestly and you've been um, doing uh, changing some of your inner dialogue as well yeah so, uh, and testing times yeah because i have had some moments where you know i've had something's either happened at work or something's happened and sometimes it would take something small just to take the legs from under me and i would um as i say hide under my duvet for a day or longer and i found that that since I've had the RTT, what's happening is, so I'll, I'll tell you about the first time I experienced anxiety after RTT, a normal level of anxiety, not the extreme stuff from before. So the first time I had a little pang, this little twist in my stomach, my first thought was, oh my God, has the RTT stopped working? And you know what? the big difference was i processed that so quickly like within half an hour it was kind of okay that's fine i've processed it and now i get on and that was that and it was like oh my god you know rtt isn't supposed to be i realize now rtt is supposed to be a magic wand where you never feel crap about anything or you never ever suffer from anxiety or nerves because all of those things are natural in us it's the extremes of them that are yeah. really debilitating and unhealthy so there's been a couple of moments over you know not many of them admittedly but i have processed them ridiculously quickly compared to what i did before you know before you were managing it now yeah. you're processing it it's, it's very yeah different. yeah that's exactly it um and it feels really weird saying all of this stuff out loud because as i say i've hidden it for hidden how i felt about life in general it stopped me right you know i was supposed to be writing a book and i just couldn't write a book from a place of anxiety it was coming out in the writing so yes. it was stopping me from doing that it was stopping me from engaging with people that i love because it all became too much and now i feel a bit like a not necessarily like a social butterfly but it doesn't phase me nothing seems to phase me at the moment as you said you're enjoying life yeah 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 ridiculously so it's just wonderful no it's wonderful to see you it's just bouncing off you it's lovely i know i you know the thing is i have been telling everybody about it i can't help myself because yeah. they've noticed it in me too and i feel like a huge huge weight has come off my shoulders really it has i yeah. feel lighter about everything i feel brighter about everything and i feel that i'm much more mentally healthy that's the thing and part of the reason i'm glad that we're doing this is because what i haven't really gone into is how severe the anxiety and depression was and i thought i might as well say that now but there were many times where i just thought i just don't want to be here 
and I, I can't believe I'm actually sharing that thought, but it was a, it was a narrative on and off over years. Yeah. I kind of felt like I wouldn't do that, but it shouldn't have even been on my radar as a thought. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was one of, it was a constant and every now and again, it used to worry me and, and I thought, Oh my God, I can't tell anybody they'll section me or something like that. Um, so I just got more and more into myself and um, social situations. Nobody would have guessed it because over many years I sort of became, you know, really good at pretending, Hey, everything's okay. You know, everything's fine. And I could bounce off other people. So that would be fine. But on my own, huge struggle, but just yeah. nobody ever really knew. It reminds me of the, there's a analogy, isn't there with, you know, a, a swan on the water and its feet going mad underneath the water so you see the the calmness on top but actually you know there's a whole load going on underneath yeah yeah, yeah. so what would you um, say to anyone who's watching this who may resonate with anything you're, you're saying and putting something off what would i say well i definitely say try rtt without any doubts at all 100 percent um if if anyone was you know struggling to the point where you know they they don't want to share um but they become reclusive if they're really struggling with anything quite honestly i really believe that rtt can help i mean as i said before i've spoken to so many people who've noticed the difference in me and you know what when i've spoken to them marie um it's funny how people then come out and tell me that they've been suffering the same way yeah and they've been just as good as masking it as I have, um, but they're struggling. Yeah. Um, so I've actually, there, there are, I think four, maybe five people now that I've spoken to about the RTT and I've given them, you know, details, but as with anything, you get to the own, your own point where you think this is the time for me, or you get to that pain point, I guess, where you yeah. just don't know what else to do. Um, but it's not very well known over here, is it, RTT? It's it? getting more and more well known, yeah. And uh, it's things like this that are helping to get it out there. But so there's, there are solutions. Okay. Well, I spoke to my doctor about it. And he asked me uh, for a link to your website. Cool. I know. How good is that? That's good. So, yeah, when the medical profession starts to know more and more, that, that's great. Because it is a very real solution. Yeah. As, uh, as you no, know, it's not just Im immediately after. It's it's long. Yeah. And uh, the recording as well. Um, every now and again, I listen to the recording still, because there's some brilliant stuff in there that just reminds me, you know, that um, that was my previous life and and just how good things are now it's almost just like a little refresher on my brain because it's still relatively new even though it's been a few months i don't want to lose i want the, the sort of that positive program programming sort of thing yeah to stay with me so the more yeah. i listen to it the more <sighs> the happier i feel quite honestly yeah, I always feel it, good it, when I listen to it. It's a great tool. It's a, it's a lovely, it relaxes you, and but it's also got that direction in there. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I feel, I think I said this to you before, and I don't mean to sound over dramatic or anything, but honestly, I feel like it almost saved my life because I just couldn't go on the way I was. There was no way. It sort of got to a point where I just had to do something. I just didn't know what that something would be. And I didn't want it to be something I'd tried before because yeah. if it had worked, I wouldn't have been looking at anything in the you, first you place. Would looking, I? Yeah. Yeah. So anyone else who might have similar issues or frustrations, you'd recommend that they don't. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, as well as the anxiety and depression, all the things that come out of that, um, and the way that I look back now and I think, crikey, how did I, how did I function in such a highly stressed situation day in, day out, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's not my life now. It's a big relief for you. Yeah. yeah. The biggest and thing I, is seeing the people see around it. me. There's a relaxation all over you. <laughs> 
No, you, I would 100% recommend anybody, who, particularly with anxiety and depression, and especially if they don't want to, you know, go continually to a therapist and go over painful things. That was my worry with therapy, to be honest yeah. with you, not RTT, but the therapy before, is going over and over that stuff. I look back on it, I think, I was half programming, half programming myself to be depressed by repeating the same negative, horrible situations again and again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, bye bye to that. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So, um, and what's the most important thing for you in achieving what you feel now? Most important thing. Just, you know, a joy for life, feeling connected to the world again, um, taking delight in in so many things now. So we're in coronavirus and I haven't, I know that there are people suffering, don't get me wrong, but just on my own thing, I feel like I've managed it like a, you know, like a pro. It's just, well, I haven't had to manage it. It's been fine. That's yeah. The point. yeah that's wonderful that's so wonderful and i'm glad that you were you came to see me because it, it was fantastic seeing such a great outcome i and can't it, thank it, you it, enough that's, honestly that's wonderful thank you for sharing it with 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 me and with everyone who will be watching this because it will give so much gold to a lot of people i hope so i mean it feels like coming out quite honestly because as i say i've hidden this for a really long time but I think this is imp so important that um, I feel like I'm coming out and see you know, yeah there you go. And, and other people can get to see you know there's there's things to try and this may well be one of them one of the things that you want to try mm, fabulous it works. I love it so thank you Cheryl and no worries I also I, I saw uh, Cheryl in person but I do also work online. RTT works fabulously on, online. Um, and it works just like this on a Zoom record, Zoom meeting. Um, and there are many therapists all around who are practicing RTT. I just wanted to say that for anyone else who's watching. So yeah. thank you very much. I'm so pleased. And uh, thank you to everyone who's watching as well. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Cheryl.